Now back to the number one truth fighter in Boston. The Warren Valentine Show. Only on News Talk 1090 AM. WILD Boston. Where information is power. First of all, there's no doubt that the economy is going to be at the top of the list. 877-373-9766. 877-373-9766. Now it's time to light up the phones and burn up the airwaves. Here's Warren. 877-373-9766, number to dial. If you want to weigh in on anything, also you can uh, follow us on Ustream.tv. Thank you for everybody who's investing in um, our children. Go to investtf.com, hit school fund. Uh, and I challenge all you to raise money within your communities or within your schools or within your workplace. You know, this is something that we all should be doing. This is something that we all should be taking pride in. This is something that we all should be literally trying to make something happen. Uh, I look at these emails of all these people who want to be a part of the franchise. I got the thousand dollars. I can come up with it. Many of them donated, but a lot of them haven't. And see, my thing is this. Don't be selfish. If you think you can make some money, then you all for it. But if you got to give some money to help somebody, oh man, I ain't got no money for that. But you'll be in the club this weekend, spending your money, getting a haircut, getting your hair done, getting your nails done. You go to church on Sunday, put your tithes in, which is a good thing. We all should tithe. But why not give something back to the kids as well? Why not have this moral value of, of pouring back into the next generation? Because that's only going to help you. Because I'm going to tell everybody who's involved in the franchise, and I, I want this to be perfectly clear. If once we put this together and once I get everybody situated together and y'all start buying the franchises, I'm going to tell you just like this. I'm literally going to demand that 10% of what you guys are making in these franchises, you give back to something in that community that you're in, whether it's education, whether it's uh, single parenthood, whether it's uh, cancer research or AIDS research, something, you're going to do something in the neighborhood. If you don't, I will be on the air telling people don't go in that, that particular one because I'm sick of us being all about two things in this country, sex and money. That's the only thing that matters to people in this country, sex, money, money, sex, money, sex. It's almost like we have no value for anything else, not for family, not for God, not not even for our own well-being. You let your kids play video games all day. They're not in any kind of activities. They're not in basketball. They're not in, in, in gymnastics. They don't go outside, run and play. And then you wonder why your kid is overweight with diabetes. Well, I don't know where they, this is coming from. How did that happen? Nobody in the family got this. How did that happen? You know why we was able to eat back in the day? Everybody talking about, hey, you got, it's the diet today. It ain't the diet. Think about what we was eating back in the day. We eating all kind of pork. Any, from the rooter to the tooter, we was eating it. Chitlins, everything. Fried everything. The difference between then and today, we were outside. We were working outside. We was playing outside. Today, mm -mm, everything inside. You know, everything got to be air conditioned, right? Your house, your car, your job. Act like you ain't never grew up with a fan in the window. That's why we all messed up. No value. None whatsoever. Let me start off with Dre in Boston. He's been holding. Dre, line five, W-I-L-D. What's up, Dre? You there, Dre? Hey, how hey, you I'm doing, sorry. Spider? Hey, Dre, how what's you, up, brother? Good. How you feeling today? Uh, God bless you, brother. You, uh, you taking on a lot with that church issue. I just want to let you know. Just let you know. But let, but me, let, me, tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you right now, I, I tell anybody this. I know I'm a child of God, so I, you know, I, I ain't scared to talk about what's really right. I hear you, and I, and and like you say, Warren, you're absolutely right. And I just, I do this some some similar things like that, and it just makes so much pressure, so many enemies for you. You, you know, you you think people were Christian people, they would be a little more receptive, a little more, you know, acclimated to what you're trying to accomplish. But they turn, they just, it's just, it's hard. But I know you've been on that all day. I didn't really want to go there. I just want to say something about the true fighters and something you can get us out there to see about Libya. One thing that I want a lot of people to do is the truth is probably have is look back when Muammar Gaddafi was on the tips of going out and nobody wanted to do anything but the minute those African troops and a lot of African support came up there to Libya and yep. he turned the tide and they started pushing back on the Arabs. That's when everything changed yep. because 
when they froze the money, France said, we're not going to get paid for all our military contracts and all of that stuff. They're the biggest supporters of going in there now because this ain't nothing but a mafioso hit job at the table. They, they want to take you out because now the assets are frozen all over the world. France is not going to get paid. The Arab League is worried about them African troops up there supporting them. So now look what we got. Um, yep. We got to take them out. Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right. That's a great call, Dre. Great call. Thank you for the call. You, you're right on the money. He's exactly right. Exactly right. But you know what? That's third eye, third ear. You're really paying attention to what's going on. You're really looking at what's going on. And that's the thing. You know, we, we see things all the time right in front of us, and we don't even see it. It's right there, but it's not there. Let's go to Yolanda, uh, line six in Seattle, K-R-I-Z. What's up, Yolanda? Is this Yolanda? This is Yolanda. Uh, hey, Yolanda. Hey, hey, hey. I just want to say thank you for speaking truth because we don't hear enough of it. But one thing I wanted to touch on is one of the historically greatest institutions in our black community, and that's the church. And I'm so glad that you're speaking on this hard topic, like the other caller said. It's tough. It is tough to talk about what's not going right, especially with our black leaders. Um, I think one of the biggest problems that we're facing in the church is around the different generations, Generation X, Y, uh, Z, whatever you want to call it, and then also the old, older folks. Um, right now, I think people are going into the church house. They are uh, emotionally being stimulated. Um, they feel good. But when it comes to really knowing the Word of God and really not just following people for the sake of following following them because they have a title, I, I, I think that's the problem. Uh, we no longer critically think. We don't question. We don't challenge. And here you have it. We got pimps and prostitutes in the pulpit as our leaders, and they're ravishing the people. So if we're going to change this thing around, we got to do what you're doing. we got to know, first of all, the truth. And uh, if we want to support our so-called leaders, the best thing that we can do is, like Tavis Smiley said, anybody can be successful, especially as a leader. But in order to be great, you got to be held accountable. So we got to start holding folks accountable. And anything and everything goes cannot be, you know, the, the rule of the day. You know, Yolanda, I, I totally agree with you. I thank you for the call. That's a wonderful call. Love you guys in, in the Pacific Northwest. And I would piggyback on that call and say just one thing. My mother told me this when I was a, a, a young boy. Never forget it. I was talking to my mother and telling her I wanted to do something and, because my friend was doing it. And I said, well, my friend's doing it. And because he's doing it, I know it's right. And you know what she told me? She said, always remember this. If you follow a fool, that makes you a fool, too. And see, what we're doing in this society, especially in black America, we following a bunch of damn fools. We got people standing up. They know they ain't right. And you know they ain't right. But instead of, instead of saying you wrong what you do, you say nothing. So you just the biggest fool of them if you following them. Remember, see, let me tell you something that you need to always keep in your mind. A wise man can always play a fool. But a fool, may, a fool can never be a wise man. 877-373-9766. Talking to you, Truth Fighters, right here, right now. Warren Ballantyne Show. News Talk 1090 AM, WILD, Boston, where information is power. power. Here's what you missed on Keeping It Real with the Reverend Al Sharpton. Dr. Ogletree and Mr. Mrs. Parks, it always bothers me in these cases. The police couldn't see his wallet. What did that have to do with why they shot I mean, and exactly the police right couldn't, didn't know his alcohol. Like, what did that have to do with why they shot? Exactly. They did the same thing in Amadou Diallo and the same thing in Sean Bell. They always act like, well, the victim might have had something to drink. Well, you didn't shoot them because of that. What was the only reason a police has a right to shoot is if their life is threatened. Let's go to Miss Richardson and Chevy Chase. Miss Richardson. Yes, how are you? You know, Reverend, I'm not the age. I have seen it all, you know, and and if we don't stop playing games with each other, with a lot, lot of time black people will do that to each other. We harm it ourselves. If we cannot understand what this system is doing and what the powers to be is doing. 